Hey, Tantric Travelers, how are you? It's been a minute, maybe even a second or a moment. And today I'm celebrating a full moon in Pisces. It's the second day of the full moon in Pisces. And it's been very purging, very powerful, very peaceful, um, challenging. And I've just returned to the land of the pines and the granite, where I'm from, from my second home down in Mexico. And I'm super happy to, to be here in this gorgeous energy of the natural matrix of the north. There's nobody around right now. Um, someone is helping me quarantine, but they are not present. So I was called to open up the channel and talk to you guys and offer a full moon in Pisces. Time. Pick a card. Reading. And I don't even know what the question's going to be. So why don't we just celebrate with a little bit of Blessed Copal. I've got my crystals that I've been tuning in the moonlight beside the lake on the moss and they're really helping to ground me and to connect me with my guides and your guides right now so i've also got some chocolate my beloved cacao which is made this one is made with um the syrup of the maguey cactus the maguey plant i bought it right before i left the airport in Oaxaca. So I'm happy. I've also got my Egyptian perfume. Custom blended for me. A green apple from Canada. Offer our kind, wise guides and ancestors on this blessed day. So why don't we have those as the three? Just a sec. Why don't we have those as the three pile options? Egyptian perfume is pile number one. This is a blend of blue lotus and papyrus. So two of the sacred plants of the Nile in Tem in Egypt, and mm, it's really delightful. It's very light, but it's very compelling as well. And when you're wearing it and you walk into a room, into a place, people notice that some some power from the Nile River has has flowed into into their presence. And I love it. And the second pile will be green apple beautiful, I think it's like a Granny Smith, they're kind of sour, and there are no worms in them. This is an organic apple from a tree in my, my mom's neighborhood. And the third pile will be the Chocolate Oaxaqueño con Jarabe de Maguey. Exquisite. Mm. Okay. So let's just see, I'm going to do a super quick reading and I'm going to be using um, a couple decks. I've got my tarot with me, I've got like four decks with me. So I'm using tarot and I'm also using these days a special surprise which is I'm teaching myself to read with the cards of the Loteria Mexicana. Um, it's like Mexican bingo. But the pictures are really interesting, and I think it's probably based on some kind of a nomadic oracle deck that people were carrying at some point, and that kind of picked up as that kind of a game in Mexico. So let's start with that for you, pile number one, you lovers of the aromas of the beautiful, sacred land of Tem. So, as we release all of the learning and healing that we've done with this new moon, the Soy 
with this full moon in Pisces, this full, fishy, wishy-washy moon of completion and beginning. As we do that, what are the biggest influences for tantric travelers who love the perfume of Egypt? Ooh! Ooh, you got some big cock doodle doo energy. So there's, um, there's some masculine energy. There's some forward, fertile momentum. There's some sexual interest in you. Um, there's something, there's some big energy, some big morning energy. This is like the big good morning, you know, you can't ignore it. Um, so you could, you could get an actual sexual offer from someone in the morning, um, communication. You could also get a wake-up call to an opportunity that will be very fertile and abundant for you and feel like you're winning the lottery. And the key word there is feel. So yeah, you can't do too much better than that. The next one we have is El Nopal. And I think of this as being like the Ten of, the ten of Cups. So it's emotional fulfillment. Um, you know, it's a lot of orgasms, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of fun, um, a lot of beautiful people, a lot of people who are like you, could be your star family, could be your soul family. If you felt like you've been in a social desert for a while, uh, I feel like you're about to be reaping abundance. And it's very positive energy. Um, it's also like kind of because the, the texture of the nopal, when we eat it, is, um, you know, it's very kind of slimy and silky and really good for you. And it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like maybe like a little lubricant to ease the way into your new day. <laughs> and if you've got this uh, big good morning energy, you might need a little lubricant, if you know what I mean. I had no idea this reading was going to be like this at all, but, I mean, it's really raining here. And yesterday I was having a shower in the outdoor shower, just um, behind where I'm living here. And it's, it's attached to a pine tree. And when I finished, I looked down and there was a giant toad sitting there. I didn't even know. I've been having this, you know, erotic experience showering outside with this toad. So I thought that was good luck. And the third one you have is El Valiente. So this is like the fighter, the battle, but it was in the reversed position. I'm called to read it in the reverse. So I feel like this kind of means like you're not going to be in that energy anymore. You're going to be in the energy of pleasure, enjoyment, and partying with like-minded people. So you're going to be able to put down the weapons and, and not be in conflict anymore. Um, and just reserve that courage and that energy for the future, for another day. Okay, and let's get one card for you from the tarot. Egyptian perfume, Tantric Travelers. This one. Hmm. So, yes, I do feel like a state of mental equilibrium will be reached for you, and that there will be you know, some kind of feeling of neutrality. I think this is more related to the last card of the Loteria, the Valiente. As far as like being in battle or being in conflict with someone, um, being on high alert, um, you know, being in a uh, an uber sort of watchful, defensive attitude, I think that's going to change for you and you're going to come to a state of energetic, equilibrium and appeasement, which kind of stops attracting those kind of conflicts to you. So it's a bit of detachment, but it's also a bit of trust in the mystery. This card is often seen as negative, but I, I don't perceive it that way. You know, I feel like she's being guided by the, not even the light of the moon, but the energy of the magnetism of the divine and trusting that things will be revealed in their time. So yeah, I do see pleasure. I see love and social enjoyment. I see an end to a defensive or conflict um, position, attitude. 
and by the time the new moon in the new moon in Libra rolls around, which will be quite soon, I I see that you know this air energy is coming in in a balanced and equal and um, sort of more peaceful way, peaceful position of trust rather than being on high alert or, or uber vigilant. Okay, there you go, pile number one. I hope you're enjoying this um, this full moon in Pisces as much as I am, and I hope that this reading on Tantric Traveler finds you happy and healthy. I do do pr private readings as well, so if you're interested, get in touch with me below, um, and I will be posting also more readings on my little Etsy account as well. So enjoy, be well. Okay, pile number dos, numero dos, which was, was it the green apple? Yes, it was. It was the green apple. I'm not going to eat it right now because I like to cut them. But um, yeah, that's your pile. So with the green apple, yeah, I'm getting some very witchy energy. I feel like pile number twos could be, could be witches and it's beautiful. Welcome. I always welcome my witchy brothers and sisters and yeah, just hang tough, stay strong and don't let them persecute you any more than they do because our season is upon us and this is our time. So we can do the work that we came to do, that our souls came to do, that our souls came to complete, that our souls came to assist in in all of the different modalities of magic and manifestation that we work with, we can do that work best this season. And let's just see. Sorry about that. I'm going to use uh, my tarot and the Loteria Mexicana for your reading. So let's just get this shuffled up right for you, pile number two. My witchy, witchy, witchy. Companions, friends, and fellow travelers, fellow nomads on the path of stars. What are the influences? Mm. My highest witchy advisors for tantric travelers who chose the green apple. What energy should they be aware of? during and after this full moon in glorious wet Pisces. We have La Mano. There's some help coming to you. Let's get a couple more for you. Ooh, Alacran, Scorpion. That is some power and we could with all of this witchy energy, we could also have some Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising Tantric Traveler in the house. Also look at where Pluto is in your chart, and this could give you some hints as to where you are receiving help, healing. I'm already getting some clues from looking at these cards together and feeling the energy. Okay. Oh, El Pino. So the pine tree, which is really about the pineal gland. So as you can see, the position of the hand in, um, in La Mano is coming from, from beneath and upwards. So this is an ancestral assistance I'm feeling, and it's a communication that you're going to be receiving. So it could be through, um, you know, an object, a gift, a memory, um, a photo, regarding your direct lineage of ancestry. It could be um, through an inheritance that you're receiving from parents or grandparents, and um, you're receiving help from the ancestral realm, and it's through some kind of a communication that will empower you. And I also see this as the end of a cycle of healing for you, pile number two. Um, and as I said, you could be, you could have significant Scorpio placements, or if you look at your eighth house, 
And you also look at where Pluto uh, was positioned, or was positioned now and or at the time of your birth. You will know specifically what this could be about if you're puzzled. But I think you'll probably know soon. And it could also be in the Scorpio season. So coming into the last couple weeks of October and into November when that beautiful time of year starts. And we also have, so although you're receiving help from the ancestral realm or, you know, kind of the earth realm or the lower realm of those who have been here before us here on earth, you're also receiving help through, you know, your higher connection. So your guides, um, and this is coming to you through the clearing of your pineal gland. And you can clear your pineal gland by connecting with the earth even sitting under an actual pine tree. These are very, very powerful beings. They're around us right now, and I'm so grateful that we're receiving this affirmation of their consciousness and presence. Um, I was telling the last group that I use an outdoor shower, which is connected, attached, or held up by a beautiful white pine tree, and that is uh, a profoundly magical purifying experience and the animals the birds the chipmunks and even a toad came and had a shower with me there the other day and it was really really precious but with or without the rain these white pine trees are known to uh, indigenous peoples around the world or here in the north where I, where I am now as the tree of healing peace and reconciliation and I know we are coming into a time of that now so as we go through this process and put to right the wrongs of the past, stand up for ourselves and speak our own truths, and as we receive, um, you know, we receive compensation in admissions of responsibility from any who have acted against us, and as we do the same, we are also opening up the energetic channel for truth and justice to be the strongest frequencies that exist within ourselves, within our immediate environment, within our societies, and our human consciousness for our planet in the present and the future. So things can change very quickly. Do not let others convince you that everything is not still in motion. Okay, so that's a beautiful message for you, pile number two, green apple, my witchy, 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 switchy pile. Let's see what the tarot has for you. Pardonnez moi. Oh, how gorgeous. And after this, this expression of the truth and the telling of our own truth, we are clearing the way for the fool to come in. So this is very powerful energy for those that chose the green apple. The fool is the beginning of a new cycle. And just as I was channeling for you that this alakan or scorpion energy, number 10 is showing the completion of a very challenging cycle of healing. You can see, you know, this, this sort of, very neutral looking scorpion sitting on this bright yellow background enjoying basking in the sun in the light being brought to light and being comfortable in its own essence as a natural being and when that occurs when we accept ourselves with all of the projections and you know um, all of the negativity that people can sometimes place upon us upon our energy field it begins to clear, and when that happens, we're free to move forward into um, the new cycle for ourselves with faith, with loyalty, and with a lighter heart, without all the baggage that we've been carrying on the long journey of healing that we're just completing now, so we can move on to our next learning journey. That's very beautiful and very happy for you, Green Apple. And I think, you know, an apple is a Venusian fruit, and green is the color of renewal. So this is heart chakra renewal as well for you. Be blessed, pile number two. If you'd like to get in touch, please comment, like, subscribe for sure. Um, and if you'd like a personal reading, I do a whole variety of those. You can look on my Etsy page or down below for how to get in touch with me.
Who do I spy? Okay, pile number three. Moving on and into the energy of all of you wise, pleasurable gods and goddesses who chose Chocolate Mahakenyo. Mm. Truly divine. Truly divine. Okay, so for this Pisces full moon, purge, power, pleasure, and peace, what is on the energetic menu for pile number three? Chocolate Oaxaqueño with the syrup of the magical lunar nugget. What is on the menu, please? Highest guides, plant medicines, mineral companions, animal guardians. What is on the menu? We're going to start with the Loteria Americana. Okay, beloved. And we've got La Luna. So this is probably a very significant um, lunation for you, the full moon in Pisces. You could be a Pisces or a Cancer. Um, or you could just have been connecting with the cycles of the moon. And I feel like you're connecting with your star family and you're see receiving a lot of insight and illumination. And that can occur in the shadow aspect of this lunation as well. So as the moon is diminishing now and we've hit her peak as the full moon in Pisces, we are releasing all detritus from our healing process and allowing ourselves to lighten, to smooth out, and to come into equilibrium again. So I feel a lot of healing for you and I feel like this is emotional for you, pile number three chocolate pile. I, I also feel, as I said, you're strongly guided by all of the lunar gods and goddesses, including Maya Huel, who is the goddess of the Maguey cactus, the chocolate, beautiful, sacred substance frequency that you chose today. So what else do we have? Oh, we've got El Barin. So this is about collective energy too. So I feel that you actually now may be a healer for the collective as well. And the healing that you do is freeing you up. The healing that you're doing personally is freeing you up to continue helping the collective in your, your physical society, in your physical home, your country. Um, but it's also helping, you know, change, temper, and mature the collective energy, the wisdom um, in your group of friends. You're not being influenced by it as much as influencing it. So this can also have to do with, you know, political events or processes that are occurring where you live. And yes, the last one is the very powerful La Calavera, the skull. Number 44. So you have three numbers in their 40s here. 47, Luna, 42, Albari, and 44 for Calavera. And even though this initially looks kind of scary or doomy, it's actually, look how happy this skull is. And the skull, the skull symbol in um, Mexican iconography is actually, you know, a symbol of equanimity, a symbol of love, unconditional love and understanding of the processes of change and transformation. And it's also the, the freedom of emptying the mind of preconceived notions, because really our skull is a container. And when we're in a dead or decomposing state, when our physical body is no longer, um, you know, residing within our soul, here on earth as a human or any animal that has a skeleton and a skull, um, we are, we're freed, you know, our skull becomes empty and we return to the eternal emptiness of pure potentiality. So 44 is 
definitely a power number, and it's showing me that you're coming into um, a very empowered understanding of reality and consciousness in all four of your bodies, so the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual or energetic. But it's also showing us that the power to change our minds or receive transformation in the mental plane, in our mental body, um, really puts us in touch with the potential to change all of our bodies and to be a, a free-flowing participant in surrender to divine reality, the expansion of divine reality. So this is really about transformation, very powerful energies for all three tiles today and for you as well, um, for you in particular. Tile number three, let's see what the tarot has to say about this. So I do see transformation for you personally and your understanding of how that affects the collective. Also really understanding that you know, anything that seems like uh, overpowering your consciousness from the collective, from media, from, um, you know, political or kind of nationalistic or other kind of false authorities, emptying your mind of the importance of that is actually going to be very freeing for you and bring you back into a state of peace and self-love and renewal and allow your heart to really um, take the lead for you again. Whoa, a lot of powerful channeled messages coming through today. I want to remind you that when I do these readings as a scribe, as a priestess, that I'm channeling this information for you. This is not my opinion or advice. It's coming through for you. And you're welcome to receive it, to release it, or to share it as you wish. Okay, can we please have a tarot card for Chocolata? Yes, okay, so you have, and I was just talking about the channeling coming through and the power of it, you have the Eight of Wands. So this is your own ability to receive and to channel guidance, information, intelligence, love for yourself and for others. Um, this could be confirmation that you yourself are a seer, are an oracle, are a healer, are a guide, and this Eight of Wands energy is talking about Sekhem. So the more that you're connecting with the power of your own guides and your own divine highest self in whatever divine energies you work with, whether those are gods and goddesses or, you know, frequencies of divine cosmic natural substances, places, temples, um, or the natural realm, which is imbued and is a part of the divine order of things. Um, whatever, you, whatever you are devoted to and whatever you connect with for your own guidance, I feel that you will start um, being wanting and being surprised by your desire to share this guidance with others. Um, and I feel you're going to be, because you've cleared or are clearing and releasing um, these ties to, to kind of previously important belief systems and programs of larger groups of people, um, when you release those and you make space for it, your divine energy is coming in. And I do see the number eight here, and that brings me into the mind frame of Scorpio energy. So I feel this could be particularly important for you during the Scorpio um, sun and moon season. And with the Calavera, that confirms it for me. So, you know, from the week before Halloween, pretty much onwards um, into November, I feel that this process is going to be very powerful for you and you're going to be feeling your power and you're going to be feeling how blessed your magic is. That's a beautiful thing. Um, I'm very happy to bring these messages through to you and for you and to channel this guidance from our kind, wise ancestors and our highest selves and highest guides, our soul families, our star families, and our earth friends and families. 
if you wish to get in touch with me or know um, further about the kinds of readings that I offer, please look in the description below. And also, I will add information regarding my readings and availability at in my Etsy shop, Tantric Traveling. So, have a wonderful day, file number three, and all Tantric Travelers, thank you for joining me again. It's been a huge pleasure, and I, I feel very happy to be talking and communicating with you on this channel again. Also, I'm posting something else on Sekhmet Speaks, um, uh, an alternate channel that I opened not too long ago here on YouTube, but I haven't posted very much, and Sekhmet is speaking to us these days, so I'm grateful for that, and I invite you to join us there if you're interested. Thank you, Tantric Travelers. Be blessed. Adieu.